Welcome, everyone, to our Microsoft Build session on automating and customizing retention and deletion scenarios. I'm Roberto Iglesias, a product manager of the newly launched Microsoft Purview, the new brand family name, which includes all our compliance products, including what we'll talk about today, which is Microsoft Purview Data Lifecycle Management, previously known as Information Governance, and Microsoft Purview Records Management. This is the first Microsoft build session for our products. As for the last couple of years, we've been focused on building the foundation of our product. And until now, we're starting our extensibility journey, where we'd like all of you to customize and extend upon what we've already built so far. To start, I'll spend a couple of minutes sharing what our product does and what's our vision for extensibility, so you can clearly know which things are fair game for you to develop on top of, and which ones we don't recommend you do. Then we'll share three areas of opportunities for developers, some existing and some we're announcing today. Let's dive right in. So what is data lifecycle management and records management, and why do I care about it? Well, in simple terms, data lifecycle management is what helps you keep the data you need and delete what you don't across your entire digital state, both Microsoft 365 and non-Microsoft data. Why is this important? Well, beyond any good housekeeping practices and organizational needs, the most important reason is because a data minimization strategy helps protect you by reducing the attack surface and ensure that when you're breached, you only have the information that was strictly necessary, something critical in a zero trust assume breach strategy. And because not everything in your digital state should be treated the same way, we have our records management solution to help with that high value content, which are evidence of business transactions, which need to be treated differently due to regulatory or organizational needs. We do all of this through a foundation of retention policies and retention labels, which limit the chances for errors by keeping the data in place right where it's created and leveraging the power of Microsoft 365 to automate most of the process. And of course, all what we do is defensible thanks to our strict controls and thorough auditing. Now, as we invite you all in this journey of extensibility, we want to be explicit on which areas of the product we support extending and which ones we don't recommend you customize. At a high level, since our product is built right into Microsoft 365, anything requiring the restriction of actions, storage, or even indexing of items, we're much better suited to execute on and do not support extending. Similarly, all parts which are core to our retention service, including how retention policies and labels work, how different conflicts are resolved when items expire, are all things that we do not recommend customizing and will remain core to the functionality of our product. Of course, all this still leaves a lot of areas to extend and customize. Basically, anything to do how content is labeled, classified, all of it is an option. So for example, if you build some great technology to automatically classify data, you can do that and just apply the correct retention label to the items you identify. Similarly, any of the processes that are executed when an item expiration is done, whether it's disposing or customizing our own disposition review process, or even creating custom processes of your own, all of this is fair game. And finally, any specific solutions to meet niche requirements or vertical solutions are definitely areas we encourage developers to dive right in. And as we focus on building the product to meet the more general requirements across all industries and geographies, you'll have much more room to do that. We're excited to see what you'll build. Now, let's move on to talk about three great opportunities for developers to help organizations with data lifecycle management. Let's get started with policy scoping. 
where the opportunity generally available today in all tenants is to help organizations with their use of adaptive policy scopes. For this, let me start with a brief context of what adaptive policy scopes are and how you can develop for them. When we initially built retention policies and label policies, we envisioned them being used to cover all locations within a certain application, like SharePoint or Exchange, and the system was optimized for this use. However, we realized that a lot of customers needed more granularity, and our static policies, which allowed you to manually include or exclude locations, quickly became hard to manage and hit many of our service limits. For this reason, we built adaptive policy scopes, which reorganizes the tenant in buckets based on the user, group, or site attributes, and will automatically keep it up to date. So as new people start or transfer between parts of the organization, your policies are always targeting the right locations. Now, you may ask, what does this have to do with me as a developer? Let's check it out. All these scopes are based on attributes and metadata, whether from Azure Active Directory or Exchange when creating user and group scopes. Or, in the case of sites, it would be key value pairs stored in the site's property bag. So, two great extensibility opportunities are to ensure that those Active Directory and Exchange attributes are always up to date in relation to changes in your organization. For example, building an integration with an HR management system which knows when employees start, departments change, or any other important event. For users, this would be something you can do leveraging the user's endpoint of Microsoft Graph. A second scenario would be to add custom key value pairs in the SharePoint site's property bag during provisioning. So if you have some custom provisioning logic, or even if you don't, you could use site design's functionality of SharePoint to call your custom code and automatically set these properties. A key thing here is that our recommended best practice is that you enable custom scripting, set the properties, and immediately disable custom scripting. We've worked with the PMP team to get this done in the PowerShell library, and it's much easier with just one function, and we hope this will be in the SharePoint SDK later on. Again, adaptive policy scopes is now generally available in all tenants, so this is ready for you to use. For our next section on our first announcements, I'd like to welcome Samriti Seth, who is one of our amazing product managers of our team and has some news to share. Welcome, Samriti. Thank you, Roberto. It's great to be here. I'm extremely excited to be sharing my time here at Build with our developer community and share the latest APIs we have available. Today, we are announcing three new APIs, which are the first release of data lifecycle and records management to Microsoft Graph as a part of our extensibility vision that was already covered by Roberto. For a while now, customers have been able to use PowerShell commandlets to automate our solution. However, with Graph, we now support security and extensibility best practices, including app authentication. Plus, we provide RESTful APIs designed with the future of our products in mind. As you can probably deduce by looking at our new API URLs, all graph endpoints of Microsoft Purview will be joining the already existing security ones under the security node, making it easier for all of you to develop and extend across different security and compliance products. While our vision is to bring all of data lifecycle and records management operations to graph, we are starting this journey with the cornerstone of records management, which is retention labels. Additionally, APIs for retention events were the biggest ask we had from our customers and partners. Since these need to be triggered from outside of Microsoft 365, and authentication can pose a challenge otherwise. So we have covered APIs for retention events as well. Along with these new APIs, we are introducing two new permissions, which you will need to access our APIs, Records Management Read All and Records Management Read Write All. 
let me give you a couple of scenarios where using CRUD operations on these new entities could be helpful. Starting with events, many organizations have scenarios where the retention period of certain information is tied to external events. Whether it's an employee leaving the organization, a project completing, the fiscal year ending, or anything else. That may be registered in an external system which would drive our service to start the clock on disposing certain data. Doing a quick deep dive on the employee example, assuming you have already set up your employee records as seen here, where we have a document set per employee and all of them have a retention label applied, which has been configured to keep data for three years after an employee departs. Additionally, they also have the corresponding employee ID as metadata. When we look at each document set, all the documents related to an employee are in there and with the correct label and ID information. So with this, we could use some code like the sample here in an Azure function. For example, to automatically trigger the departure of a particular employee on Microsoft 365, and therefore start the clock for the three years at the completion of which the records will be deleted. As you can see from the code, we would pass the employee ID as a part of the query to match all the applicable SharePoint files. I'm not showing every step necessary for this scenario, but if you'd like to learn more about event-based retention and how to use it, you can go check our documentation. Similar to the previous scenario, if your organization is using a third-party system to manage the retention schedule, or you need to automate the creation or update of new retention labels, you're able to do that through these new APIs. A simple scenario is where we have to modify the retention period of a particular type of content as per updated data privacy laws. This wraps up our trailer for our new graph APIs. We are thrilled to start this journey and can't wait to see what you do with it. And yes, trailer because we have so much more planned coming your way. Our aim, as I started saying, is to bring every single action you can do in our solution through the purview portal to also be available through Graph and even more scenarios. So stay tuned for more news. Amazing stuff. Thank you, Sam Riddy. I know many of our partners and enterprise developers have been waiting for us to bring our APIs to the Graph. So it's awesome to see the first entities live. OK, but we still have some more announcements for all of you and more extensibility scenarios. So let's move on to talk about customizing the processes and workflows tied to data in your organization. We've been working hard over the last couple of years to ensure that you can cover most needs of data lifecycle. But we also have seen that many organizations have very specific business requirements they need and they may need to execute them at certain points in an item's life cycle. For these scenarios, we're happy to announce our Power Automate integration, which lets you have a Power Automate cloud flow be automatically triggered for every item which reaches the end of its retention period. Let me give you a quick rundown of how this would work. First of all, we're introducing a new trigger to the Microsoft 365 compliance Power Automate connector. That will cause an automated flow to be triggered when a labeled item reaches the end of its retention period. So the first step will be to create a new Power Automate flow which uses this trigger to perform an action. For example, I've already created this flow to move an item when it expires to another site collection to consolidate my records into a single site collection after they've been in place for a few years. In here, I can see that the output of my trigger will provide the information about the item which expired, so I can use that with other connectors, like SharePoint's one here, to copy the file over. Along with our new trigger, we're also introducing two new actions in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Connector. One for deleting an item after its retention has expired, and a second one to apply a different label to an expired item. In this example, you can see I'm actually using both. Now, back to our process. 
Our next step is to create a retention label that I will utilize this flow in and use that as the expiration action. If I go to Records Management Solution under the Microsoft Purview Portal, formerly known as the Compliance Center, I can quickly create a retention label. I'll skip most of these steps as what I'm most interested in showing you is the, the label actions after the period is over now include a new option of running a Power Automate flow. Here, as you can see, I can now select the flow I created as an action. In the interest of time, I won't show you all the steps, but the rest should be fairly familiar. Once I have created my label, I can then apply it on content, either through publishing the label for it to be manually applied or automatically applied by one of our supported criteria. The last step will be that when each of the items which are labeled have their period lapse, then the retention service, rather than automatically deleting the item or starting this position review as usual, will instead trigger the automated flow. So, I can actually go to my previously created flow, see the instance that was triggered, and even look into my trigger and its raw output to see that we're sending the information about what specific document expired and everything I may need to then execute other actions. As you can see, very easy to create the trigger and set up the flow. And once you've done that, the possibilities are endless on what you can do. Now, I'm sure that many of you, just like myself as a developer, would have done aptly noticed that this trigger is really an HTTP request with some JSON payload. And you probably started thinking about what would you do with it in your own custom solutions. It's for exactly those reasons we're announcing the ability to register your own webhook to tie into this item's expiration event. So if you want to completely bypass flow, you will be able to register your own API, perhaps an Azure function triggered by an HTTP request, which we will call. How would you do this? Well, initially, we won't provide this through the UX as an option, but we will let you register it through a PowerShell commandlet and create the retention label that way. All you'll need is the URL of the API you'd like us to call. Then, as every item expires, will trigger your API with the same JSON body that we would pass to Flow, providing the information you need to perform other actions, perhaps using other Microsoft Graph APIs. We're super excited to see what you can do with this and how partners and customers will integrate to create new and innovative solutions. This capability will probably be coming a little bit later than public preview of the Power Automate integration but it's not far behind. That's all we had for you today. I know it's a lot, but we covered three fantastic opportunities for development against our products and the start of our extensibility journey. Let's recap quickly what those were. To start, I shared with you how you can use attributes on users, groups, and sites to dynamically scope retention on label policies. Then some really introduced our first three Microsoft Graph APIs, which will be coming very soon. And finally, we discussed how you can customize what happens when an item's retention period expires, either using Power Automate or a custom API, all which would be coming in about a month or so. Today was a very quick overview of the opportunity here and definitely did not go in detail for all the scenarios and how you would like them end to end. But we recommend that you check out our documentation and our webinars, which we'll continue to do for more in-depth coverage. And we have tons of amazing resources for you to get more information about what we talked about today. Thank you for joining us and hope you have an amazing build conference.